All right, guys, welcome back to another episode on the Flop and Crappie channel. I'm Davis, and today, actually this afternoon, I was, wasn't planning on fishing, but I had a request from this subscriber. They're going out fishing this weekend, and I wasn't sure if they just bought a sonar unit or they've never used side imaging before. Maybe that they just wanted to see how I set up my side imaging unit. Um, so I'm going to go over side imaging today. This is actually going to be the third part in a three-part series, but because you guys are great, don't say I didn't do anything for you. Um, this is going to be the first video of three. I actually have a video coming out about 2D sonar, um, which is the most common, and then uh, how to find brush piles with sonar. So today is just going to be side imaging, how I set it up, what I'm looking for, and then how I use 2D sonar to complement the side imaging unit. So. I'm just going to show you up right here. I'm actually at the boat launch right now. We're going to go out into this lake. It's really, really thick cloud cover behind me, as you can see. Um, so storm, I think the storm's coming through. That's why I wanted to get this video out and just get off the water, put it up for you tomorrow morning. You're welcome. Hopefully you can find some fish this weekend with some of these tips that I'm going to talk about. So the first thing is setting up the side imaging unit. Now, I'm in only three feet of water, so the side imaging looks a little weird. But let's just go over the range. Normally when I start out on a lake, I'm in either between 105 feet to 120 feet in width across my screen. So that means I'm seeing 120 feet to my right, 120 feet to my left. Um, the problem with going out farther than that, and this is just from what I've experienced, a lot of times this is only a nine inch screen. By the way, this is a Helix 9, a Humminbird Helix 9. Side, side imaging, structure scan, or side view for the Garmin units it's relatively all the same. Um, the reason I only go out about 120 feet to start with is because if you go out further than that, what happens is you, your sonar unit's gonna try to uh, cram everything into the small screen, meaning, so let's say you see a brush pile to one side or the other of the boat. If that brush pile is 80 feet out from the side of your boat and you have your sonar unit set to 120 feet, like mine is right now, your sonar unit's going to designate a certain amount of pixels towards that brush pile, meaning that pic the, the sonar unit might, might designate 100 pixels to create that brush pile on your screen with 120 feet left and right. If you go out to, let's say, 240 feet, so double the width, there might be, maybe there's 50 pixels or less. I don't actually know the math behind it, but what I do know is the more you try to cram on your screen, the harder it is it's going to be able to, you're going to be able to see the brush pile, the fish. So I recommend starting between 105 to 120. It's for me, that's been comfortable with, I can still see fish and structure. Um, if I wanna get in close, I mark it on the GPS unit. I zoom in to let's say 60 to 80 feet left and right. I really can see the separation between the fish and the brush piles and, and whatever else is, is down there as far as structure. So that's the left and right that I wanted to go over real quick and, and the megapixels and I talk about this in 2D sonar video that'll be after this one, even though I said it's gonna be part one, it's gonna be after this one. All right, so the next topic I wanted to get into was the frequency. Now there's two different frequencies on this unit. There's the 455 and the 800 uh, kilohertz. On a 2D sonar unit, there's 83 kilohertz and 200 kilohertz. And I talk about this in the 2D video, but basically the, the lower number of the kilohertz, the deeper the, the longer the wavelength and the deeper that wave will penetrate the water column. Okay, so if you're fishing in 100 feet of water and you're fishing for lake trout or something, you're probably, most likely you're using that 83 kilohertz because it's penetrating the water column deeper. 200 kilohertz higher frequency doesn't penetrate the water column as deep, but it will give you a cleaner picture. And I'll, I'll show you that and how, how when I use 83 kilohertz, it kind of pixelates a little more than the 200 on the 2D. I show it a lot in the 2D sonar video they'll be posting after this, but the same concept goes here. The 455 and the 800. The 455 kilohertz and the 800 kilohertz, I normally actually leave it on the 455 and then I turn the sensitivity up a little bit, or it, sometimes if I'm in a little bit shallower water, I'll turn it on the 800 kilohertz and I'll turn the sensitivity down. The 800 kilohertz will give you a, a cleaner picture from, from my experience on this unit, and this is a generation one unit, Helix 9 generation one. So it's not the mega side imaging. That has a very, very clean picture. I've seen that very clean picture. The, these first generation ones, you really gotta adjust the sensitivity and the boat speed 
uh, to, to really dial in a, a clean picture. But if it's, let's say it's less than 10 feet of water and I want to use a side imaging unit, I'll, I'll turn it to 800 kilohertz, I'll dial down the sensitivity, and I'll still be able to see separation between weeds and some larger fish. It's, it's really hard to spot crappie in shallow water when there's, when there's really thick weeds. It's really hard to do that, especially on a unit like this. The newer ones might be able to, but this one won't. Um, so if you're fishing deeper than 10, maybe 15 feet of water, I'm going to put it on 455 kilohertz and uh, turn up the sensitivity, kind of balance the, the picture out, make it really clean. Let's just go into where I'm finding this. So I go to sonar on my unit, and here's the 2D one, 83 kilohertz, 200 kilohertz, but that's 2D. The image display frequency, there's 455 and 800. I'm gonna leave it on 455. We're in August right now, these fish are in deep water, um, probably in 30, plus, 30 feet of water. Uh, there's a bunch of different settings. You can clear mode, surface clutter, you can turn that down, but you can adjust it the way you want. The next one, the next uh, kind of adjustment that I make is the sensitivity. So I go to SI Enhance on this unit. So right now I have the sensitivity bumped up a little bit to 11. I usually keep that around 11, 12, maybe 13, depending on how clear the water is or if there's any clutter in the water. I like to turn the contrast up as well. And sharpness you can adjust. I'll show you when we get out there. You want to be careful with the sharpness. Um, on this type of unit, I found that if you turn it up too much, you're actually seeing a lot of the, the right microbes in the water and you might miss fish. You might mistake the fish for the microbes for fish and it just looks really cluttered. Right. Let's get out in the water. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you three different things. Ho hopefully, hopefully three. Two for sure. I'm gonna show you weed line breaks on the side imaging unit, what they look like. I'm gonna show you brush piles, what they look like on this unit. And then hopefully they're schooled up crappie, maybe some schooled up bluegill. I'm gonna show you what they look like on the unit and how I use that. Okay, so let's get on the water. All right, so here we go. I'm just gonna talk over my motor here. Now I'm on the, on the brake. See these, uh, these highlighted, I guess they're, they're really yellow. That is the weed edge. That is a weed ed edge right here. I'm on a brake where it goes from about 12 feet to 20. I think it gets to about 35 feet in the middle here, but trying to find that weed edge. This is what I got it set at 80 feet left and right right now because I want want to be able to see. See right here, I'm using my 2D sonar because I can see there's bigger fish. There's some bait fish suspended up off the off the bottom. And the darker side of the side imaging, that's the deeper side. That's where it drops off. The lighter side is shallower water. Now you're gonna see, start to see some clumps here as soon as I get back to the weed bed. Oh, there we go. So that is, actually that might be a brush pile. Well, this is the start. I'm gonna zoom in, see if we can zoom in any further. So this is the start of the weeds right here. I thought it was a brush pile, but nope, that's the start of the weeds coming off the bottom. You can see them on both sides. And that, that weed bed, as you can see, it curls right here. All right, here we go. Coming up on a brush pile. This is what a brush pile looks like. This is man-made. A lot of these man-made structures in the state of Wisconsin, they look like a Lincoln log cabin without the top on them. So that's what it looks like. It's just a big square and you can see the shadow. So the light side, the light lines are actually the wood and the shadow, what happens is it's the side imaging, the side imaging is actually shooting the, the sonar off at an angle. So it, it shoots a lot steeper. The 2D imaging, very, very narrow cone. Side imaging shoots out, but it still shoots at an angle. And when that happens, it creates a shadow. So this is telling me that this is a pretty, how long the shadow is, to, is telling me that this is actually a fairly tall structure in the water. I mean, this, this might be, well, I don't know where it was now, but, uh, I think this was about 15 feet of water, 13, 15 feet, and this could be six, seven feet tall based on the the the, de the width of the shadow or the length of the shadow away from the lighter side. So there's the lighter log. Here's the darker shadow. Judging by the length, that's how you how you can tell if a structure or, or piece of cover is big or small using the side imaging unit. It doesn't look like there's any fish around it. Um, normally I'd be able to see if there's a bunch of fish on it. We can circle back here. Okay, I'm right on top of, yeah, I think I'm right on top of a brush pile right now. Yes, I am. So that, because I kind of turned, it looked funny on the, on the unit, but that is a brush pile. There's a school of bait fish above there. This is my down imaging sonar. 
um, but I can see that on my 2D or my side imaging as well. There's a school of bait fish, shad, and it didn't look like there was any big fish on it, or as far as crappie go. All right, so I was running, I ran to this other spot. As I was actually getting up to the brush piles, this is what a school of crappie looked like right here. This is 100% a school of crappie on side imaging sonar. They're stacked up in an oval shape, and you gotta remember this is actually viewing it off to the side. So if I went over this with 2D sonar, they would be stacked up the, the, the narrow part at the top here would be the first part of the school. And then as it goes down in the water column, it, it gets wider. The bigger part of the school is in the middle and the lower part of the school is on closer to the bottom. That is exactly what I find on so many lakes, especially in late summer when these crappies school back up tight. They may not be holding this to cover. They might just be suspended all over the place. It's where side imaging like this is so key. Um, in order to find these crappie. But this is a perfect example of them. It's not a very big school. Um, maybe, I don't know. There, there might be a couple dozen in there. It's not a huge school, but those are 100% crappie. Um, I haven't seen any other type of fish with that size of school suspend off the bottom in a, in a kind of a, I don't know, a pattern like that. Every time I see crappie on a sonar, that's what they look like. Um, when they're t when they're tightly schooled, when they're not tightly schooled, it's really hard to see them. Um, it's kind of really hard to make out what they look like. But late summer, side imaging, this is how you do it right here. I hope this helps. You know who you are, the subscriber. You're welcome for the video. I'm gonna get off the water because the wind's starting to blow pretty good here, and uh, I don't want to get caught out in the storm. So. If you like these how-to sonar videos, I got two more coming out. Be sure to like the video and comment below if you have any more questions on kind of how I set up my sonar unit, anything you might want to know, anything you do different on your side imaging that I didn't talk about here. This wasn't an extensive in-depth one. I just wanted to help out the subscriber who's actually using a side imaging unit this weekend to catch some fish. That's what crappie look like. Be sure to subscribe. Bottom right-hand corner of the screen, there's a red subscribe button. Click that and then be sure to click the bell that bell notifies you every time I post a video. Also, at the end of the video, you see my face holding the crappie. You can click on that to subscribe as well. We'll see ya.